Mastering the Sanctum of Odin is the key to becoming an advanced player in Frostborn. But Odin's challenge is so difficult it is rumored that it can make four grown men cry. And even if you are successful at clearing it, it can easily cost you much more resources than it was worth. So today I'm going to teach you how to do the Sanctum of Odin using items you can get from the green zones. In order to enter Odin's, you will need to find an offering to Odin. These can be found randomly in any chest of any zone, but the most guaranteed place to find one is from one of the mini bosses at the end of a yellow or red zone cellar. If you do not know how to do a cellar, make sure to check out my tips and tricks video for this game. It may seem difficult to get an offering if you are new to the game, but eventually you will end up with much more than you need. In fact, you will get several offerings well before your team is actually ready to do the challenge. Odin's is a four player challenge, but even with four talented players, it is still the most challenging thing you will do in the game and it requires a lot of resources. Now as you get good at Odin's, it is possible to solo it, but no matter how good you are, soloing it will always cost you more resources than if you're with a team. Furthermore, when you enter Odin's, you will lose the shield that protects your base from being raided for as long as you are in Odin's. So it is good to have your whole team on so it goes quickly and just in case you need to defend your base. The only time that you can safely do Odin's without worrying about your base being attacked is if you have made peace with all of your neighbors and it is during the raiding hour y'all have selected so that those neighbors can't access their totems to declare war. If you are part of an advanced team and would like to do Odin's as much as possible, it is important to note that Odin's resets 48 hours after you first place the offering in the slot, even if you do not enter it. So if your team is not quite ready to enter, it is still important to go and place the offering as soon as it resets so that you will be able to do it again 48 hours later. But this only applies to extremely active families because very few families can farm enough resources to do Odin's every 48 hours. That being said, today I'm going to teach you how to do Odin's using items that you can get from green zones. As I mentioned in my video on how to get leather strips, the best armor to craft for Odin's is a leather hood, leather boots, quilted pants, and a quilted jacket. This gives you 14 armor, which reduces damage by 46% and increases your movement speed by 12%, while not costing you any leather strips. If you guys take turns taking hits, then the original four sets of gear that you make for your team will be enough for the whole challenge. After that, you will need 20 stacks of food. As you get better at Odin's, you will not need all 20 stacks, but sometimes things go wrong, so it's good to bring all of them just in case. And then lastly, you will need 160 planks, 200 iron bars, and 80 nails. This will allow your team to build up to 40 shovels, but I would recommend keeping it as raw resources so that it takes less space in your inventory. If getting 80 nails seems impossible to you, then you have not built your workbench yet and you are not even an intermediate player and therefore have no business doing Odin's. Go level up, farm for your workbench, and then things will get a lot easier for you. Now some of you will still think this is a lot of resources, but you have to keep in mind that this is the cost for all four players. So if you're part of a good team, you should only have to farm for a fourth of what I just mentioned, which is really easy if you use the tips on my playlist on how to get rich. Also, after doing Odin's a few times, you can start using your runes of power to craft piercing daggers. Using only three runes of power out of the many that you will find to craft piercing daggers and use them in the way that I'm going to teach you, your team can reduce all of the costs that I have mentioned by 20%. And then you can also reduce all of the food and armor costs by another 20% using weapon breakers, but unfortunately you can't craft those nor find them in the green zone. So once your team has farmed these resources, go to Odin's and put everything in the first chest. Putting items in this chest is especially important if you have extra weapons so that just in case you die, they don't lose their durability. But it's still smart to put them in regardless so that everything you need for the challenge is in the same spot. The first floor is pretty small compared to the rest of the challenge, so I'm going to discuss the best strategies for killing each of these enemies a little bit later on in the video. For now, the two main things that you need to know about the first floor is the boss called the Giant Chief who you have 
have to kill in order to unlock the second floor and the three loot caches. As you kill enemies in open chests in Odin's, you will get wood, silver, and gold pendants. Once you get 30 of one type of pendant, you will be able to open the corresponding cache. These caches are your main source of tin, which can be turned into steel, fasteners, which are important for building higher tier backpack and the highest tier armor, and tons of good gear. For example, the silver and gold caches are the only free to play source of plate armor. You also get lots of awesome potions, and most importantly, you get a ton of really awesome weapons, which is essential for PvP and defending your base. After you do Odin several times, you will have an abundance of leftover wood or silver pendants, which means that there will be times that you open Odin's only to enter the first floor and unlock one or two caches and then leave. If this is the case for you, the cheapest way to do this is to hug this corner so you don't aggro the giant, kill this guy, and then come over here and kill this guy. Then you'll need to aggro this guy. Meanwhile, you'll want to loot this room because there are no enemies in it. Sneak past this guy and then come over and kill this guy. After you open this door, you will have to kill this guy. And then as you kill everything else in this hallway, I would recommend not sneaking up on them. They're so close together that a sneak attack will aggro two at a time, and it is cheaper to fight them one at a time. That being said, you will be able to sneak up on the last one, and once you open this door, you can sneak up on this one, which will give you access to the three caches. But doing this only applies to those of you who have too many leftover pendants. If that does not apply to you, then you will want to kill everything on this floor. But as I said earlier, I will go over those tactics when we talk about the second floor. Also mentioned earlier, in order to get to the second floor, you have to kill the giant chief who drops the key to unlock the sanctum. This boss has 13 armor, which reduces damage by 44%, meaning that his 4,000 hit points is actually more like 7,000. To make things worse, he does 90 damage with his basic attack and 270 damage with his special attack, so you do not want to get hit by him. Right now, there is an easy way to kill this boss by using the Spirit Bowman to reset him so that you can get unlimited sneak attacks on him. The best way to do this is for everyone on your team to select the Burst of Lightning and Spirit Bowman spells, which are the two spells I would recommend selecting anyways, and then have your team go on the other side of his flank. Sneak attack with a piercing dagger and then move out of the area while switching to your shovel. You will notice by using the piercing daggers that you and your teammate's shovels do 25% more damage, so that your team can keep dealing damage, making sure to use the piercing dagger once every five seconds. Meanwhile, coordinate it so that another teammate can use burst of lightning to stun the boss. When the stun is about to wear off, run away and use a spirit bowman to reset the boss again. If the devs ever make the spirit bowman trick not possible, then you can also reset the boss by leaving the area. And then if they change that too, there are two other ways to kill him. The first is to use ranged weapons. Since this boss is slow, it is very easy for a team of four to kill him with simple bows. But even simple bows can be kind of expensive. So if you're an advanced team that coordinates well and knows what they're doing, you can also kill him with shovels. If you do this, have your whole team come to this point, and then when the boss approaches, run behind his attack, hit him two times, and then run over to this point to do it again. You can also use lightning to get some extra hits. This is not crazy difficult to do, but I would recommend getting on voice chat so that it's easier to coordinate. Also, when doing this, I would recommend using mushroom soup for the plus 10% damage, and one of your teammates is utilizing a piercing dagger for the plus 25% damage. When the boss is dead, he will usually drop two good items and the key that unlocks the Sanctum of Odin. But do not open this door unless your team has at least a third of the materials I mentioned earlier. Doing the 7,000 damage required to kill the giant chief is almost 10% of the entire challenge, and all you get is a little key. So don't use the key unless you are ready to make it worth it. If you aren't ready, then just keep the key somewhere safe until you have the resources, and then next time when your team goes for Odin's, you can skip this boss because you already have the key. When you enter the sanctum, you will want to transfer most of your resources over to this chest so that you don't have to travel as far to get them. Then you should open this door and use a spirit bowman to reset the enemies. If the spirit bowman trick is ever fixed, then I would recommend having one of your teammates open this door while naked so that they can allow themselves to die. By resetting these enemies, it allows your team to draw them out one at a time, which makes it significantly cheaper. There are 12 different kinds of small enemies in Odin's, and the tactic for killing them is pretty much the same for all of them. Basically, you are trying to find ways to fight them one at a time, and then your whole team 
team uses shovels while one teammate occasionally switches to a piercing dagger to keep the weakened debuff applied. When you get to the last two enemies in this room, you are able to use sneak attacks on them. When doing this, make sure to use your piercing dagger for the initial sneak attack so that you are always doing that extra 25% damage. After you clear this room, you can open this door and sneak up towards these guys until the top one sees you. Stay crouched while you head back to your team so that you can finish him off. This will allow you to sneak up on the other one. After that, you can engage this giant hermit. Giant hermits are fairly easy to kill with shovels and a piercing dagger because his basic attack only does 39 damage. But it is important to avoid the giant's special attack because it does 120 damage. After that, I recommend going over and opening this door. Ranged units are some of the most difficult enemies to defeat cheaply because they often put you in situations that require you to fight multiple enemies at a time. So when engaging a ranged enemy, make sure your team hides behind a wall so that they will come all the way to you. This will allow your team to take the least amount of damage. After you kill those two, this room is empty so you can go ahead and loot it. And then in the next room, you will face your first stone giant. Stone giants are definitely the scariest enemy in Odin's because their basic attack does 120 damage and they have a long range skill that can and often has killed an entire team with one blow. Now because his special skill does 300 damage, you can technically survive this blow if you have at least 32 armor, but that would require wearing purple gear, which should be reserved for PvP. And he stuns you for 3 seconds, which means you will likely die anyways. So if you are doing Odin's the cheap way, then you have to be careful with the stone giant. That being said, once you learn his rhythm, he is pretty easy to kill with shovels. In order to do this, you simply want to run for 5 seconds, and then rush past him and hit him twice while he is finishing his animation. Then run away for 5 more seconds and repeat this as needed. You can prolong this time with a burst of lightning to keep him stunned, but if you do this, it's important to wait until the animation finishes, but you don't want to wait too long, otherwise your teammates might get hit. After the stone giant, you will find 6 enemies in this room, which you will again want to use the tactic of drawing them out one at a time. After you kill them, you guys get to open your first chest room. These 3 chests have much better loot than the other chests that you have opened this far, so take a little time to see what you get and revel in your victories. After you have fully reveled in your success, you can open this door which will aggro a wood giant and one other enemy. Run far enough away so that you can kill the small enemy by itself and then get ready to fight the wood giant. The wood giant is the most difficult giant to kill with shovels because his special attack has a large area effect stun which also does 113 damage. If your team is newer to Odin's, I would recommend using ranged weapons to kill wood giants. Even though it'll cost you a lot more resources to craft the simple bows, it will help you get adjusted to the challenge so that you can use more advanced tactics as you guys get better. Since the wood giant's basic attack is only 59 damage, an advanced team can kill a wood giant using only shovels and piercing daggers by rushing him right after he uses his skill. If you are using the armor I suggested, you can take 3 hits before you have to run away, which is enough time for a full team to do over 500 damage. You can also prolong this time by using a lightning spell. In fact, if you time your lightning spell so that it disrupts his skill, then it is possible for a talented 4-man team to do all 1200 damage before he is able to use his next skill. After the wood giant is killed, use the tactics that I've already shown you to make it through these 9 rooms. When you get to this room, the doors and walls will have a gold trim signifying that you are getting close to the Sanctum's final boss. The Draugr Necromancer has zero armor, so her health is about the same as the Giant Chief, her basic attack is only 49, and her skill only does 113 damage. But what makes this boss so difficult is that she is fast, and her basic attacks reduce your armor by 6, making it very difficult to survive in a prolonged fight. Furthermore, her special attack can easily catch you off guard, which can result in the death of your entire team. So if you have to fight her properly, then I recommend bringing her to the loop in the beginning of the map. By using this loop, your team will have a lot more mobility and ways to escape if someone gets downed. This battle will still not be an easy one, but you will find that it makes it a lot easier to kill her no matter what weapons you are using. If you are using melee weapons, then you can use the tactic I mentioned for stone giants, but you might want to use something stronger than shovels, because otherwise it is going to take you an extremely long time. That being said, right now the easiest way to kill the necromancer is to use the sneak attack shovel lightning combo that I mentioned on the first boss and then resetting her with the spirit bowman. When you kill the necromancer, she will 
will drop a bunch of really good loot, and eventually she will drop the key to gain access to Odin's Forge. At the time I'm making this video, the Forge does not exist in the game yet, but as soon as it does, I will make a video on the cheapest way to do the Forge. After you loot her body, you can open the final chest room. You do have to kill a couple wood giants and shamans, but these four chests have a chance of giving you really good loot. After that, open these two rooms to gain access to the stairway, which can take you back to the first floor. At this point, you will have used about half of the resources that I mentioned in the beginning of the video and gotten well over half of the varnish, sulfur, runes of power, and a few other unique items to Odin's. So if that is your goal, then you can stop here. But you have gotten much less than half of the silver and gold pendants that you would get by finishing off the rest of the enemies, which is key to getting all of the good gear that you see in the shop. So since you have already done all this work, I would strongly recommend finishing off everything else in Odin's. Having access to this stairwell will give you more reset options and mobility as you work towards finishing off the rest of the enemies using the tactics that I've shared previously in this video. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. If you think of something that I missed, please leave it in a comment below so that I can improve and others can see it. Also, please remember that YouTube does not pay a whole lot, so liking, subscribing, or supporting me on Patreon are all ways that you can help me make more content for you guys. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you.